Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk real quickly about hypothesis and research questions. Uh, and generally, the this is the basis for scientific investigations, and it follows you in statistics and research methods and those types of things. But it is part of the research process. The fundamental, the initial steps in any research process is developing these two things. Okay, the research question. First and foremost is the basis uh, for inquiry into a topic, right? All scientific endeavors should generally start with the question, all things you do, right? And when you're questioning knowledge or uh, trying to advance knowledge, uh, it's the beginning step, right? Science combines uh, rational or logical explanation with empiricism, empirical evidence and those types of things. So all of it really starts, the fundamentals is developing a question. It starts with a question, why does the apple fall off the tree, Does is the earth flat, um, do delinquent peers uh, create delinquency, uh, does the death penalty deter people from committing capital crimes, right, uh, capital murder offenses. So uh, those are all research questions. And, and then you go through the process of, um, generally the next step in the process is to go out uh, you know, nowadays our technology makes everything easy, so you go do a Google search. But back in the day, you'd have to go, you know, to a library, to a professor, somebody with some knowledge in, in what's known at that point in time and investigate it and do your literature review. All right. And from there, it's easy to make a hypothesis, right? And generally, your hypothesis is going to be an informed, right? I know early on in, in education, you learned that it's an early. An educated guess. Well, how is an educated guess? I mean, based on what? You know, I think I think the Earth is flat still, and there's people thinking that stuff out there. But there's enough evidence to support that. You can go do a search, and you can go ask other people who've traveled around the world and see the whole thing and all this type of stuff, and take all this logical explanation. People been in the outer space and all this stuff. So you go and do your investigation to get your literature review and all that type of stuff, and that's what makes it an educated guess. So an hypothesis really stems from your research question. So you develop a question, does the death penalty, uh, you know, deter capital murder? So that would be a research question. A hypothesis would make a specific statement regarding the relationship between usually two variables, two or more variables, and derived from more general theories. So, uh, you know, you could go do your Google searches, look at empirical evidence that suggests, that looks at the matter, and say, yes, the death penalty deters people, or no, the death penalty doesn't have any deterrent effect, or uh, if you want to look at if anger management cures uh, violent uh, behaviors, yes, anger management works, or no, it doesn't work, based on previous studies and all this type of stuff, or, you know, you get the idea. Just making a, a statement. And it's educated because it's based on what's known. And that stuff is generally rooted in theory. It's important that, and we're going to talk about theory in a minute, but hypothesis in and of itself, what it's doing is making a causal statement. All right? So uh, a research question, is the world flat? Uh, a hypothesis would be the wor world is actually round, right? Uh, does the death penalty deter? Uh, hypothesis would be, yes, the death penalty is a deterrent fact in capital murder cases. Does an anger management or rehabilitation program work? Yes, it is working, or no, it's not working, or yes, it does have an effect, okay? So this is kind of what it looks like. An independent variable, the death penalty, the anger management, the drug treatment, you know, the after-school program or whatever to, has an effect on delinquent behavior or drug use or whatever, or decreases, all right? I put a, increases or decreases. So that's a causal statement in and of itself. That's what a hypothesis is doing. It's making an informed uh, causal statement. So theory, hypothesis, is important that y'all get this. Uh, hypothesis should be rooted in theory. Here's a good definition for theory. It's a set of logically interrelated propositions used to explain an outcome. So what theories do, they classify, they organize, explain, predict, and attempt to understand events within a, within a field of study. Essentially, it's like a, a filing cabinet, right? So you have a theory, and you test certain hypotheses associated with that theory, and then you can go on and either adjust the theory or eradicate the theory or advance. That's how kind of things work. That's kind of how knowledge progresses over the long run. It's hard to see from simple one-in-one -one types of studies, but really that's how things work. Um, so if you want to say there's a theory, right, uh, a social learning theory says that um, 
Crime is learned, essentially, right? So it's learned. It's learned through a process. There's lots of propositions used to explain what, how crime is learned. It's learned through exposures to definitions favorable to crime. It's ex uh, learned through the process of learning crime is uh, conducted through differential uh, association, hanging out with uh, individuals who are involved in uh, deviant lifestyles, differential reinforcement, being reinforced behavior that's deviant or delinquent or criminal, uh, and, um, you know, imitation. Those are the big four propositions associated with Aker's social learning theory in criminal justice. Similar can be said to deterrence theory, the theory of deterrence. So you got three things. Uh, criminal justice system needing to be swift, severe, and certain. All those aspects need to uh, combine and come together for a criminal justice system to operate effectively. And that's essentially what our system in this country is based on, right? So uh, capital punishment, that should be a deterrent effect. Or let's say hot spots policing, right? Or, you know, saturating the area with uh, with policing and, and police forces and all that type of stuff. Uh, it should cause a deterrent effect, right? Because there's a certainty that an individual will be caught. That's one of the three propositions within uh, deterrence theory. So these are theories Hypothesis should underlie it. So theory should drive research, right? And, and it should drive your hypothesis. And, and, and your hypothesis should be well-rooted within the theory, whatever you're studying. It doesn't have to be in criminal justice or criminology or sociology in it either. Uh, psychology, physics, and biology, all these fields of study, they need to, you know, theories are there uh, and for a reason. And your hypothesis help develop that type of stuff. So what hypotheses do, they make causal statements, right? Crime is learn right hanging out with a uh, kids who smoke weed is going to increase the likelihood that somebody else is going to smoke weed right or uh this drug rehabilitation program is going to decrease drug uses right really what you're testing though is the null hypothesis so the hypothesis is essentially you got your null and your al alternative or research hypothesis and we'll get to that on the next slide but your null hypothesis the hypothesis of no difference is what's being tested st uh, statistically right so essentially you're going to say that x has no effect on y that's your null hypothesis that um you know the null hypothesis would be that the death penalty does not have an effect on capital murder um that the drug rehabilitation program does not have an effect on drug use that you know the anger management program isn't affected that hot spots policing isn't an effective deterrent or community policing isn't a good good policing model there is no effect it doesn't reduce crime right that would be your null hypothesis and that's what you're testing statistically uh we'll talk about confidence intervals and that type of stuff and, and generally the alpha level has to be right five times out of 100 or you're 95 percent confident that it's going to occur more like more often than not 95 times out of 100 uh, and then we say it's statistically significant, essentially, is what your alpha level is. Within the social sciences, that's generally the threshold. Anyways, that's what you're testing, your null hypothesis, because it, it assumes there is no relationship there. All right, and then this is important going forward. You're not accepting your, your alternative hypothesis or your research hypothesis. You're either failing to reject the null hypothesis or you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the drug treatment does work. All right, or you fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the death penalty doesn't have an effect on uh, capital murder, right? So uh, just to keep that in mind, that's going to follow us, and that will follow you uh, in all your statistics and research methods and courses. So understand that that's what you're testing, the null hypothesis, that there is no difference between independent and dependent variable, and you're either rejecting the null hypothesis or you're failing to reject the null hypothesis. So that being said, uh, you got your null hypothesis where there is no difference, and then the alternative hypothesis, your research hypothesis, your educated guess that you're making is the alternative uh, in research hypothesis, depending on uh, where you uh, get your information from or textbooks. Some people say alternative, some people say research hypothesis. It doesn't necessarily matter, they're both the same. So there is, it states that there is a relationship between two or more variables, that the drug treatment program does have an effect, that the death penalty does have an effect, that this after school program does reduce gang membership, right? Uh, it can neither be directional, that uh, increase in X uh, in increases Y or a decrease in X decreases Y. So an example would be that uh, attending anger management reduces uh, violent crime, right? Or attending the after-school program increases pro-social behaviors, right? Or 
uh, hot spots policing or saturating an area or community policing increases uh, crime clearances, right? Or whatever. That's a directional. So you're saying it as a direction. It, it either has a positive or negative influence. A non-directional one would be uh, the death penalty has an effect on capital murder. You don't know. You're not saying that it, it decreases or it increases capital murders that occur. This is non-directional, right? Or community policing does have, a, have an effect on crime. Not making the contention that it's directional or non-directional. It's, it's the assumption that it could actually increase it or decrease it significantly, right? Um, so that's a non-directional. That's the difference between those two, okay? Um, so those are the big things to think about within this this video, the research question, the hypothesis. But what should a good hypothesis have? It should be de stated in a declarative form. Just make a causal statement. You know, not I think, not I believe, da 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 da, da. Just uh, make the statement. Capital punishment de decreases um, um, capital murders, all right? Or community policing increases relationships with police in the community. Right, or after school programs and mentoring programs decrease delinquent behavior. Right? Pose it the relationship between two variables, between the variables, understand the relationship there, acknowledge that, base it on uh, what is known empirical evidence that suggests there is a relationship there. Uh, reflect on a theory. I, I talked about theory already. Integrating theory is important. Be brief and to the point and make sure that it's testable. All right, you want to have to be, be able to analyze these types of things if you're going to make a, a hypothesis. Uh, if you can't test it, it's not worth entertaining, right? So you need to be able to test uh, the death penalty where it's instituted versus capital murder rates uh, versus places where it's not instituted, right? Or how this uh, after school program reduces delinquent behavior versus kids who don't attend the after school program. It needs to be testable. It needs to be measurable. It needs to be quantifiable to some degree. Otherwise, it's just hearsay, essentially. It's, 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 it's irrelevant. It's anecdotal for the most point. And it's not uh, conducive to scientific knowledge or progression of knowledge or betterment of society. So, you know, stay sharp. Think about what you do. And uh, hopefully this video uh, helps you out a little bit. So, y'all take care, okay?